Hello everybody, my name is Anna Kogan and welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are doing well. And today we're going to be reinstalling my entire Windows installation. So it's been a long time since I've done this because my last installation was so good, I didn't run into any problems with it. So let's do it again and this time I'm going to show you guys. So I'm going to show you from start to finish from BIOS install, well BIOS setup to Windows installation, apps installation, apps configuration and finally creating a backup of the entire system as an image so that you can revert back to it at any time you want to. So that's all what I'm going to show you guys today. And another reason I wanted to show you guys how I do all these things is because I look at my computer and I see how it's clean, functional. It looks like it's going to work, you know, every time, every time you boot it up. It looks like anytime you look to find something, you can find it even with the horrible Windows search and just have a nice structure. Because when I look at other people's computers, it's you know, the desktop is cluttered like hell. The downloads folder goes up to here and that just doesn't look great to me. So I wanted to show you guys how I do everything from start to finish so that your computer can look just as clean as mine. And we're also going to go into a little bit of a folder structure and we're going to take a look at my RAID array, how that's set up and a bunch of other things that I can come to think of during the making of this video. So without further ado, let's begin the installation process by wiping this thing clean. Now the first thing you're going to do is create a USB drive that has the installation on it for Windows 10. So we're going to go to the following website and click on the Create Windows 10 Installation Media Download Tool Now button. So click on that, you'll go through the following prompts. When you first open up the program, you will see this notice. I would just press accept unless you want to read the whole thing. Then you should create an installation media for a USB drive or DVD or ISO for another PC. Then select your language, edition, architecture, or just leave the use the recommended settings box ticked. And then choose which media to use, in this case a USB flash drive. Select the USB flash drive and press next and let the installation complete. Once the installation has been completed, you can leave the USB stick plugged in and restart the computer. A prompt should show up that tells you which buttons to press to go into what setting. Mine has three options, QFlash, Boot Menu and BIOS. If this does not show up in your computer, please find out which button you have to press for your motherboard. This can be found in a motherboard manual or a simple Google search for your computer model should suffice. Now, once we enter the BIOS, I'm gonna switch over to advanced mode by pressing F2. And here we can see a bunch of settings. Now, I always turn my XMP profile on and you should too as well, if you have the available slot to do so. I also enable above 4G encoding because I have a 64-bit operating system and got more than four gigs of RAM and VRAM to work with. Uh, my fan controls, I enable the CPU fan fail warning and set the temperature warning to 80 degrees. Uh, I also enable all the other fan fail warnings as well. Now back into the BIOS settings, we're gonna go to the save and exit and save and exit this setup. This will reboot the computer with the current BIOS settings installed. And from that point, you can also save it as a profile now from this point on, you can take a look at some of the other settings. You can possibly also enable fast boot at this point if you so desire. Uh, but from now on, we're gonna go to save and exit and we're gonna force boot off of our SanDisk USB stick that has our Windows installation on it. Now let's go through the Windows install process. Select the language and all that stuff. I'm gonna keep everything to set to United States and press install. Setup is starting. And I do not have a pro well, actually I do have a product key, but it's tied to my account, so I don't need to re-enter it. A Windows 10 Pro installation, and we're gonna do a custom installation. And you're gonna find the drive that you're gonna install Windows on. I have a 250 gig SSD dedicated just for this purpose. So I'm gonna delete all the partitions that are on it. One by one, delete all the partitions of drive three in my case. It's gonna be a different drive for you. And then we're gonna select the unallocated space for drive three and press next. At this point, it's going to go through the entire installation process by copying the Windows files off of the USB stick. And then when the installation comes to an end, you need to restart the computer. Then whilst it's restarting, it's... Well, this is going to happen. You're going to see your motherboard splash screen icon, and it's going to say starting up devices, getting the services ready, getting devices ready, all that stuff. Just let that finish. It's going to take a while. After which the computer will reboot again. And after the reboot, you'll see this screen come up. The Windows installation. So let's start by selecting a region. That's gonna be Netherlands for me. So I'm gonna scroll all the way to the top here. So alphabetical Netherlands. 
and then a keyboard layout united states and dutch i want two keyboard layouts there we go now do i want to set it up for personal use yes i do and i'm gonna log into with our microsoft account you can do a local account in the bottom left but i'm gonna do a microsoft account and it's gonna ask for a pin but we're gonna remove that pin later because we want to use the password instead um, which is much more secure in my opinion and so yeah we're gonna remove the pin later so don't worry about that then let's see location based experiences yes i do want that uh, find my device do this if you have a laptop uh, basic diagnostics all the time and no pen diagnostics uh, i do want targeted ads and a content id uh, this experience thing is new i'm gonna skip that and I do not want to use this on my Android phone. It's going to install a custom launcher on your phone. And well, I already have Nova Launcher. I can't use that. Backup files with OneDrive. I say next, but you should actually say store files locally only. You should say that. If you've got a 365 Office plan, you can enter it here as well. But yeah, I chose to go with the OneDrive, but you really shouldn't. Uh, but we'll come back to as of why later. And uh, now we'll have to wait for the computer to go into the windows. Now, as the computer starts up, you're going to notice a lot of applications being installed. The action manager in the bottom right is popping up all sorts of notifications. It's setting up all the USB devices, getting all their drivers installed and set up to the windows updates. And we're just going to let this run for a bit and let it finish until all those notifications stop disappearing. Um, because I have a Razer Kio webcam, this pops up. Now, I don't use Razer Synapse. I don't like to use their software. I picked this camera specifically because I don't have to use their software with it. So I'm just gonna end up dismissing that. And now the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the settings. So I hit Windows key plus I and go into Windows Update and immediately start checking for updates and let all those updates install and download because, well, sometimes you grab a Windows installation ISO that's a little bit older than what is the most recent. So this is a little bit of an older installation, but we can immediately just update to the latest and greatest by going into Windows Update. So we're first going to go and run our Windows Updates uh, and when all those updates up the top have started or finished downloading and installing, we're going to hit retry because some of those have failed and we'll just let that finish. Now, the first thing that I wanted to do is get rid of this pin to prevent me having to enter it every time I log in. So like at the first boot. So go into the settings, go to account, sign in options and turn off require Windows Hello sign in for Microsoft accounts, then remove the pin by unlocking it with your password, then close the window and in start, start searching for net, N-E-T-P-L-W-I-Z, and then tick out the box of users must sign in with password, then press apply, enter your password, and that's it. You're done. Now you don't have to log in with your password anymore. This is however only available for the first boot. Once you go into sleep or whatever, it's gonna lock again and you have to enter your Microsoft password again to log in. Now we're gonna install App Center, which is one of the applications tied to my motherboard. So if you go to your motherboard support page, this is where you wanna go and install all those apps and drivers that are tied to your motherboard on the support page. So I'm installing App Center and with App Center, I'm also installing at BIOS. And with App Center, I can update all my drivers and with at BIOS, I can update my BIOS. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna launch App Center and once it goes through all the updates, I'm gonna launch it, and then we're gonna open up at BIOS. And at BIOS allows me to update the BIOS through the server. Server was down at this moment, so I'm gonna use a file instead. I have already downloaded a BIOS file. You just, just wanna grab that BIOS file and insert it into the update from file. Again, your motherboard will be completely different from mine. You're, you, you won't maybe not even have such an installation as this, but I do wanna make it sure that I'm on the latest BIOS. Uh, if you want to take a look at how to do updates on the BIOS on your motherboard, then please refer to your motherboard's manual or look online. Now, what is happening now is it's overriding the old BIOS with the new one, which has some increased memory compatibility and other options that will enhance my motherboard's experience, so to say. Then Windows will restart once again.
Now Windows has booted up again. I get a notification we got more updates, but this is going to be on the driver's part. So in the top right, there was a button I could press and then I can go through update and not installed. I'm going to go through the not installed and we got some new drivers there for the chipset and for the audio driver for my motherboard. And we're going to install all of this. Uh, well, most of it. Uh, in terms of the actual extras, we're going to install RGB Fusion for the RGB on my motherboard. We're going to install Easy Tune for an easy overclock. And we're going to install the Gigabyte firmware updater for when the BIOS ever crashes or gets destroyed, we can recover it. Now, the chipset update did trigger another Windows restart, so we're going to have to go through that whole ordeal again. Just selecting what is not installed yet and installing it. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to mostly clean up a lot of stuff. So uh, we're going to disable the show Cortana button, show task view button. Uh, we're going to remove the search. I'm going to add a links toolbar to offset the, the, the taskbar icon. So we're going to drag that links uh, icon all the way to the left and disable the title. And then we're going to slide those icons over to the left and then we're going to lock all the taskbars. And now it looks like Windows 11. We're also going to turn off the news and interests, which was added recently to Windows, but I don't like it. So we're going to turn that off. There we go. Uh, there's a new icon there, Meet Now. I'm going to later choose to hide it because I don't use Meet, whatever the hell it is. So it's going to be like Teams built into Windows now, but yeah, I don't want it. Keeping the desktop clean, removing anything that I don't need. Removing the taskbar buttons that I don't need. Removing the start icons that I don't want. And we're going to start organizing this stuff. So let's see. First, go to the start settings. So all the settings for the start. Well, let's see. We're going to turn a bunch of stuff off. So show the app list. You do want that to happen. But you don't want to see any recent added apps. You want to turn off the suggestions. And I also want to turn off any of these apps jumping to the jump list on start. Now we're opening an explorer window and going into the options of quick settings. And here we're going to go into view and show all hidden files and folders. I do want that. And we're going to go into the bottom here on the privacy and say show frequently used folders under quick access. I want to manually control what is in quick access. I don't want the computer to decide that for me. Then apply. And there we go. Now we have full control over our own quick access. No random things will be added over time. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move all these files that are tied to the user. So we got music, we got desktop, we got pictures, all that stuff. So I want to change the locations for that. And Windows has a built-in way of doing that. But first, let me clean some stuff up. Now, before we continue any further, I do want to show you guys my disk manager. You can go to yours by right-clicking on the start menu and go into disk manager. As you can see, I have seven drives installed, six of which are in a RAID array. You have the fast storage. This is my NVMe SSD, or two of them actually, and they are working mirrored. So they are reflections of each other. If one drive fails, the other one is right there to keep the data intact. Same goes for the backup drive. This is mass storage for old videos and whatnot, backlog, you could say. And there is the gaming drive. These are two Seagate Barracudas, around 200 megabytes per second, read and write working together as a striped volume or RAID 0. So they work together, twice the storage, twice the speed, meaning one drive fails, all data is gone. Then there is also disk 1. Disk 1 is just my OS installation SSD. This is a 250 gig SSD. And then there is disk 0, which is a 500 gig SSD that has all the applications on it. And that's a split partition for development, which is all where I store all my code. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the location of the downloads folder. So by default, it's under C, users, your username, and that's where the downloads folder usually resides, as you can see. Now, I want to move that to a different drive. So as you can see here, I am making a new folder on my backup drive dedicated just for downloads. So downloads, you can move it to any other drive you'd like. I'm going to copy the path of that downloads file 
I'm going to remove the quotation marks and there you go. B slash downloads. That's what I'm going to move it to. So apply and that's it. Now we're going to also do that for all the other files. So documents, desktop and all that. Now, this is where I need to bring up that with the OneDrive installation that we did is we chose for OneDrive to back up our files at the start during Windows installation. Now, I recommend you don't do that for this reason. Now, OneDrive has taken over the Documents folder and some other folders there because they're now moved into the OneDrive folder. They don't appear there, but it's, it's where they are now. So we need to turn off OneDrive. We have to unlink it and then we can change the file location again. As you can see, when I'm trying to move the documents folder, I'm getting an error for access being denied and that it cannot be redirected. So first we're gonna to have to unlink OneDrive. So the way we do this is by going into the system tray in the bottom right, click there, right click on the OneDrive icon and then say settings. I'm gonna move it over to the tray there. There you go and settings and then unlink this PC, okay? We're going to do that. Now OneDrive is removed from the Windows installation. Now we're immediately going to reinstall it. So we're going to enter our email, sign in, enter our password. And then we're going to change the OneDrive folder location. So not on the C drive, which is the default. We're going to change that to my backup drive as well. So we're going to go to backup. And we're going to select my already existing OneDrive folder. And we're just going to say use this folder. Ignore all the files that are already on there. And we're, this is the important part. Desktop, documents, and pictures. Normally it backs these up. We don't want those. So uncheck them and then press next. And we get the tutorials and all that stuff. And we just next, next, next. Later and OneDrive is ready. And there you go. So now OneDrive is moved. And it doesn't include desktop, documents, or pictures. So now we can go back to documents on the library, pictures and desktop and move them to different locations. So here we can see documents being moved to a different location. So we're going to open up another instance of Explorer. You can do that by shift clicking on Explorer, by the way. And we're going to go to the documents right here. I'm going to copy that path and we're going to paste it in there. And we're going to apply it and that's it. It's moved. Now these are some old files. I'm just going to end up deleting those because they're empty and useless. There we go. And now we're going to have to do the same thing for all the other things. So that includes downloads and all that stuff. There's something a little bit wrong with downloads right now. I don't know exactly what, but and now it works again. Okay. Weird. Okay. We're going to change music to B slash music. Okay. Pretty simple. Let that apply. And the same for pictures. Location. B slash pictures there we go and then desktop i'm gonna put desktop on another drive because desktop i do want to be a little bit more performant so i'm going to move the desktop to the f drive for my fast storage which is where all my videos reside as well so because i want my desktop to be a little bit more performant sometimes depending on what i put on there uh, i'm gonna put all this on the fast storage so fast storage f slash desktop and now we're doing the same thing for video b slash video this is all my backup stored videos my backlog of youtube videos and whatnot now do the same thing for the 3D objects. I don't mess around with 3D objects, but I tend to put this on the B drive as well. Oh, and what I did here is I pressed Windows key V to do a clipboard history paste. So if you press Windows key V, you can enable the clipboard history if you'd like to enable that as well. I have that enabled. It's very insecure for copy and pasting passwords because it will store them, but you can also manually remove them from the history if you so desire. Now I'm just doing a little bit more cleanup, deleting some more folders that I don't need. And now we're gonna install the rest of the motherboard utilities that I still have to install. So CFOS, what, what is this? CFOS speed? Yeah, uh, a gigabyte 
network passing tool that allows you to reduce ping and whatnot, which comes from my motherboard. So I'm going to install that. And we're also going to install fast boot module for the app center, which will allow me to enable and disable fast boots or put it on ultra fast or even go straight into the BIOS without having to press any buttons during startup, which in the case of ultra fast, if you do that, you can't actually press any of the buttons during boot. So it's very unsafe, but it will allow you to boot faster. And then the only way you can go into the BIOS then is by either resetting the BIOS, either by removing the battery or having a CMOS switch on there. So use that whether you like to or not. Now I also installed Gigabyte's cloud server, but I'm going to end up removing that eventually because the, it, the app for it has been discontinued. So not going to use that anymore. It would allow me to turn off and turn on my computer remotely, but sadly it's no longer supported. And now I decide to hide the meat icon so you can right click on it and you can hide it because I don't tend to use it. And then I also see that Skype is active. Oh no, that's not good. No, 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 no. So right click on start, then apps and features and search for Skype and install that. And there's a bunch of other apps that are also installed through the start menu. So we're going to go through it and clear those out. So Groove Music, don't use it. Uninstall. Uh, what else do we got? We got... Microsoft Solitaire, yep, uninstall, don't use that. Mixed Reality Portal, don't use that. Yep, can remove it. Office, well, my office has expired because I don't, I'm not on school anymore. So that's gone too. OneNote, don't use it, can be gone. Paint 3D, don't use it, can be removed. Sticky Notes, don't use it, can be removed. And yes, even the tips can be removed. And now we're going to start ticking off applications from my apps list. So first, Zevensip. It allows me to extract and archive stuff a little bit faster than the built-in Windows. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to install 7-Zip. Uh, and we're also going to take a look at my disk management right now. Because my drives have to be reactivated and resynced after the installation. So you can see, for example, that my disk 6 and 7 for fast storage, my NVMe drives, are set as a RAID 1. They're separated, and when one drive fails, the other one is still functional. I'm changing the drive letters now. Okay, so we're going to change the apps to A and development to D. And, uh, you know, fast storage is F, gaming is G, and the OS stays on drive C. Other things you can see is you can see the gaming drives are blue, marked blue. That means that they are working together, so they're in RAID 0. So if one drive fails, all the data is gone. Keep that in mind. But it does allow them to be twice as fast with twice the storage. And now that I've changed the drive letters, now I'm going to install the applications. So A slash 7-zip for 7-zip. And we're just going to go through these one by one. And we're also going to install Ryzen Master. Ryzen Master is a software by AMD that allows you to configure your Ryzen processor. So you can turn it into game mode or creative mode. Game mode being really good if you do gaming because it disables half of the cores. So I have a 12 core. Um, when I enable game mode, it limits it to only six cores so that it performs more like a traditional uh, gaming processor with less cores. It does help a lot with performance because some games don't like to have multiple threads and multiple cores to work with because they don't know what to do with them. So reducing the amount of active cores is actually a good thing. It also has a studio mode that allows it to enable all the cores and work at them really efficiently and hard to make it easier to work in creative apps such as Adobe Premiere or any other creative application. Now we're also installing an app called Bulk Rename Utility. This allows me to rename multiple files at once by replacing all sorts of factors from them and add prefixes and suffixes to files, change the extensions and whatnot. It's really helpful utility for renaming tons of files. So when you're working with a ton of video files, for example, it's nice to be able to rename all of them at the same time following a simple algorithm with a counter or whatever. We're also going to install ClickUp, ClickUp being my management of tasks. Uh, sadly, I can't install this on the apps drive, kind of sad. It has to be tied to the C drive for some reason. Don't know why, it's stupid. ClickUp, please do something about that. But anyway, uh, it's a good app. It's really good for task tracking. If you know Trello or uh, like GitHub projects or anything like that, it's really, it's like that, really efficient. Multiple other apps that are tied to it and you can do it for free and whatnot. 
Uh, you can also work with a team and it's really good and really efficient and it's for a mobile app as well. Then we have Google Chrome. So Google Chrome, yeah, we use Edge and Edge's only purpose is to install Google Chrome. Now, I know that the new Edge is pretty good and I haven't really been messing around with it that much. I, well, I really probably should because, well, it's got something that Chrome never had, which is HDR. Or at least I think so. The old Edge used to have it. Um, but with yeah, the original Chrome, you can't actually watch HDR. So Chrome, yeah, it's going to be in Dutch for a bit. Don't worry about that. Uh, first, we're going to have to install an extension, Bitwarden. This is my password manager. So if I want to log into anything, I need this. So we're going to add that extension to Chrome. So Bitwarden free password manager. I'm going to add that. And we're going to log in that. So we press the little extension button and drag it on to the pin. So it's there all the time. And we're going to enter our email address and my main password. You'll never know what it is. And that allows me to access all my passwords. Oh, actually, I still need to do two-factor authentication. Give me a sec. There we go. So now I have access to all my passwords and whatnot. So I can log into Chrome. There we go. Just autofill that. Oh, refresh. Then autofill. Right. Okay. There we go. Everything's set to go. And then on my phone, I have to confirm that this was me. And yes, it was. And we want to turn synchronization on. It's a weird thing in synchronization, actually. There's a folder in my bookmarks, multiplayer portal. I, I've i removed it multiple times, but it keeps reappearing. And then, and yeah, in my account settings, I'm going to look for Tal or language. We're going to swap that over to English to be, to be my uh, main view language. There we go. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to remove an extension, the Netflix Teleparty. So it's, it's a good uh, extension. You can watch together on Netflix. It's really cool. And it works pretty well, but I haven't had anybody's yet anymore for a time. So I'm removing it <laughs> uh, as I struggle logging into Bitwarden again. I'm going to grab my credentials for ClickUp and sign in. And now we're going to pin Chrome to the taskbar. Clean up our bin. It's a lot of gigs in there. And now we're going to continue going down the list. So Creative Cloud, install that for all my Adobe apps. Sign in using Bitwarden. Really good password manager. You know, LastPass had that thing where you now have to pay to have multiple devices. I was not a fan of that. So I defected and went to Bitwarden instead. And I really recommend it. And it's free and it's open source. So it's great. Oh, and it's not a sponsor. Keep that in mind. Now, the installation of Creative Cloud is going to take a while. So in the meantime, we're going to install Discord. And sadly, Discord also cannot be installed on a specific drive. It is like tied to the deeper files of the C drive. It is system dependent. So yeah, it's installing automatically on a location on the C drive. And uh, you can't really move it, which is sad. It's trying to detect an account for like a web-based login, but it's not there so there we go and now i just gotta sign in and then it's to turn to dropbox we're gonna install dropbox and uh, dropbox is what i use uh, to transfer files between my ipad uh, for my teleprompter app so my teleprompter app is tied to a dropbox so i jump my scripts in there if i want to read them off of my ipad uh, with a custom made teleprompter it's pretty sick you should see it but uh, <laughs> yeah, cardboard box with a piece of glass in it. Anyway, Dropbox, I use it for only that. It's basically, it's only purpose because there's not a lot of storage on there. But hey, it's free storage, and it's you know, it's it's just for additional backups. And scripts is the perfect item to store in there. Now the Dropbox installer got a little stuck, so in the meantime, we're gonna install the Elgato, the Elgato uh, game capture software. So this is for my capture card that I used for the PlayStation 4. PlayStation 4 is gone now, but yep installing elgato game capture it's i can still use this this current computer to use that but i don't really know if i'm going to use the capture card much more without a second pc you really need a second pc in order to make good use out of it but uh yeah installing that as well under apps and then game capture there we go then suddenly dropbox prompted me for this and reminded me that i had to rename the pc because currently it has an arbitrary weird ass name and i want to change it to sander 3900x 
So when Windows Start, start searching for PC name or view PC and rename the PC. So I'm gonna change the sander and then the processor, which is 3900X. After which it has to restart again. But after that is done, we can see all the changes that we've made and like what's happening on startup and whatnot. And there's definitely some stuff opening up that I don't want. So the CFOS speed for the gigabyte thing uh, pops up right here. And I don't want that. I don't want that to pop up anytime. So, but I do want it active. So I'm gonna go into the settings of that. So right click on the icon and I'm gonna make sure that all these options are ticked off. So the auto hide, all that stuff. I'm gonna take all these options off to prevent it from showing upon the desktop once I start it. So there we go. That should theoretically fix it. I'm still looking around for other things that might affect it, but that should have done it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the Adobe apps, except cancel that real quick because I'm forgetting something. Uh, and also stop the drive sync and all that stuff because, well, Creative Cloud by default installs on the C drive again. So we wanna change that. So we're gonna go into the settings here of the Creative Cloud and we're gonna swap that over to the fast storage drive. So I'm working with all my video drives or video files and whatnot. And well, these drives are also working together as a RAID one. So whenever one dies, the other one still keeps functioning just like my backup drives. And uh, yeah, we're changing the location to the fast storage. So that's where my Creative Cloud apps and uh, or sorry, Creative Cloud files and everything will reside. And you know what? Before we continue the installation, we're also gonna install GeForce Experience first. So GeForce Experience allows me to update my graphics drivers. And that's basically, it's only use case for me, but it does have other features such as a screen recorder and whatnot. Of course, if you have an AMD graphics card, you're gonna install a completely different utility, but yeah. Now the Creative Cloud files are being synced in the background. It's 2,700 files. It's gonna take a while. It's like. 11 gigs, but yeah, it's gonna be busy in the background before we uh, install any of the Adobe apps. I wanna finish that. And I'm also installing Corsair IQ while going through the NVIDIA installation. But the Corsair IQ, depending on what RGB lights you have, you like RGB fans, you might wanna go back to IQ3 because on IQ4, my fans are not supported yet. The SP RGB pros, they're not supported yet on IQ4. So I had to revert back to IQ3, but how I set that up, we'll go through later. And the NVIDIA login page is reminding me that I have to set my default apps or default browser more specifically. So I'm gonna make sure that the web browser is set to Google Chrome. And yes, I wanna switch anyway. Dang it, Microsoft. Yes, Google Chrome is the default browser so that when I click on retry right here for the remote login, I'm gonna get a Chrome tab to open up instead of Edge. So I have access to my Bitwarden autofiller. So I'm gonna log in with Google on NVIDIA. And now back to Corsair IQ. So I'm gonna change where the install is gonna take place on apps. And we're gonna set a new folder here for Corsair IQ specifically. So we're gonna move it to the apps drive. I'm gonna create a new folder here, Corsair IQ. And that's where we're gonna install it. If you quickly want to create folders, use Control Shift N to make a quick folder on the fly without having to right click and click new folder. Just to speed up a little bit. I don't want a desktop shortcut, but I do want a shortcut in start menu. And I can send and I can send and installation is a go. Now with the NVIDIA login, I forgot to actually verify my email. So I have to go through the entire process again, but this time look at an email and go through it. And no NVIDIA, I do not want an authenticator app code because you're not important enough. And IQ4 is finished in the background. Now we're gonna install NZXT Cam. And at the same time, we're gonna do OBS Studio and Samsung Magician. We're just gonna install all those at the same time. And uh, yes, and uh, OBS, change that to A slash OBS Studio, install and Let's go through some other stuff here on IQ. The new IQ looks all new and flashy. Skip the tutorial. But uh, yeah, I had to revert back to IQ3, but we'll go about that later. So continuing to set up process, OBS, finish that and log into NZXT Cam. You can also do this as a guest, uh, so you don't have to log in specifically, but I chose to. 
Now returning back to the installation of Samsung Magician English. And close NZXT cam. Samsung Magician, next. Accept the agreement, accept the agreement. Quick launch icon, always. And okay, Nvidia experience is also finished up. And we want to download a driver. Now I'm going to swap over to the Studio driver, which is a more stable version of the driver. It means you don't get the latest features, but it is stable. So if you're running creative apps, it might benefit you in the sense that it won't crash as often. Now, Samsung Magician is done. Don't have to do anything else, but it's just to monitor my SSDs. I have so many now. Now, in the NZXT overview, we got a couple of settings. The one I'm concerned about is cooling. I want to set that to silent because I don't want them to be loud. Or actually, it's kind of dumb that I'm going in here for the fans because I can only control the pump now. The fans are Corsair now and not controlled by NZXT anymore. So, yeah, I forgot about that. But anyway, the pump, uh, I do set that one to performance though. Now, what we're going to install now is ShareX. ShareX is where well, you can make more advanced screenshots than the default windows. You can make screen recordings, GIFs, all sorts of things. So uh, this is what I use to do such things. So you can do small screen recordings, GIFs, you can upload them instantly to Imgur or whatever. You can do a lot of stuff. You can upload it to specific locations, copy it to the clipboard. You can choose, you can do whatever. It's a really useful application. So I do definitely recommend it. Then I'm also gonna install my Sound Blaster Katana software, Sound Blaster Connect 2. This is to control my sound bar. So here we go. It's very hard to find version two of this, by the way. Like their, their, their website is not intuitive at all. And we're gonna express install the NVIDIA driver. So the screen might flash at some points. And uh, Spotify was already installed. I just got to log in. So I'm gonna go through that process. I'm gonna log in, get my password, copy it, log in, enter the name, password. And there we go. Might have to change that to something longer because that looked really short. And then in the settings of Spotify, we're going to immediately configure it. We're going to set a couple of settings. So let's go down to advanced. And I always turn on crossfade. I do like that. So the songs fade into each other. Uh, then we also got open it up during startup. We want that on minimized. Uh, close button should minimize Spotify. I don't want it to exit the application. Then we also have the audio quality. We set that to very high. And the download quality also to very high. If I do download, I don't really do that. But yeah, there you go. I also disable normalize the volume because I don't want to alter the audio uh, as it came from the streaming service. I want it to be the original. Then I'm also going to install Ultra Search. Ultra Search is my way of actually finding stuff on my Windows computer. I absolutely, and here's the screen flickering from the NVIDIA driver being installed. <laughs> but yeah, I absolutely hate the Windows Search because it can't find anything. Um, with Ultra Search, it indexes everything really well. And you can select what to index very easy and efficiently. So it is a very useful program. I definitely recommend it. It allows me to find my files much easier provided you give them good naming. If you can give anything good naming, then this application is fantastic for you. It allows you to do some very advanced filters, but more importantly, actually find your files. So there you go. Ultra search. You can just pop it up on the desktop by using control shift U, but you can change the hotkey to whatever. Um, but yeah, and here I am removing the default search locations. So these are the search locations that it will try to index from. We're going to remove all those and then we're going to add our own. So the ones that I want to add are as follows. I want to add my creative cloud files. I want to add pictures, OneDrive, development folder or development drive, I should say. And that'll be it for now. But I'll also later add the videos folder of all my old videos. So I can easily find those as well. Turns out I accidentally deleted the 3080Ti video because of this reinstallation of Windows. But uh, you know what? That's one video. That's one video. I can do with that. And uh, yeah, Dropbox. We have a, another notification for that popping up now. And this time I do have the correct name for the computer setup. So 
we can go through that process and then that's going to be setting up as well. We're going to change the location of the Dropbox to the backup drive as well. So backup Dropbox, there's already a folder there dedicated to that that I used to use, but we're just going to override it. So PC backup Dropbox, there we go. Then we just click next. And it's going to ask us what folders we might want to back up. Desktop documents, downloads. We don't want to back up any of those. So uncheck all of them or say not now and then continue to Dropbox. There we go. And that's Dropbox set up. And now we're going to install Voice Attack. Now, Voice Attack is a software that I use in combination with Elite Dangerous, a game, space simulator game uh, that allows me to control my computer with my voice. So I can do commands in the game and control them with my voice. But you can also use this to do things in Windows with your voice. So that's pretty awesome. And then we're also installing Window Grit. Now, Window Grit allows me to... Well, Windows has window splitting in four directions. You got the corners. You got each of the one, one corners. But Window Grit allows you to set up your own custom grit. So you can separate every window by X amount by just like... Uh, when you drag a window, you can then hold right click and you will see a grid pop up and you can like decide how big that grid is and how many slots you have. And it allows you to do even more organizing with your uh, window grid. I really started using this when I had my ultra wide or when I started to use my ultra wide, um, even though LG has its built in function for that. Uh, but this just works faster and it goes off of. Uh, Windows startup and it doesn't influence the startup process too much unlike the LG software the on-screen control Now it's gonna pop my license key in there I'm gonna go ahead and not show you guys that now speaking of the LG on-screen control That's what we're gonna install now. So under my LG folder here. We got on-screen control, which is LG software of controlling the splitting of the windows uh, controlling the monitor settings from within software and be able to mess around with color palettes and the uh, color calibration and uh, whatnot. So that's that. Oh, and whenever you get the prompt to ask if you want to restart the computer, don't. Now let's clean this mess up again. Remove that from the desktop. I don't use it. And now that LG is finished installing those required elements for its on-screen control, I'm now going to install the color profile of my ultra wide monitor. And now I'm going to install Streamlabs OBS. Forgot to do that one, so I'm going to do that as well. Also on the apps folder or the apps drive, I should say. And we're going to put that in there like so. And now we can start with the fun parts. So installing all the game launchers, Steam, Uplay, GOG Galaxy, Epic Games Launcher, and the Battlestate Game Launcher for Tarkov. Now the game launchers are all going to be installed at the root level of the gaming drive. So it's all going to be on G Steam, G GOG, G Battlestate Games, and G Epic Games Launcher, and so on. And then I'm also going to sign into all of these applications immediately, so don't forget to do that. Again, Bitwarden, great stuff. And now we're going to install Waifu 2X. Now, it sounds like a really strange name, like somebody's waifu. Trust me, it's not. It's it's a an image upscaling application that you can get from GitHub. Uh, link in the description, but yeah, I mean links for everything in the description, I guess. I mean as many as I can fit on there. But Wi-Fi 2X is a fantastic application, so I'm gonna create a folder on my apps called Wi-Fi 2X, and that's where I'm gonna put it. And I'm gonna create a start menu icon for that as well. So the way that I go about this is by going to Windows Start. And then right clicking on any of the icons that you see and then open their file location. So this one is going to show me the start menu icon location 
for that app. And I'm just going to add a shortcut to YV2X to the list. So YV2X right there. And now it will show up in the Windows Start just like any other app under the W. There it is. See? But yeah, Wi-Fi2x, it's a great image upscaling application. It's AI driven and it's really, really good. It's really powerful at what it does. Uh, it does a better job than Premiere with Bicubic and Bilinear. It's a great upscaling application. But um, yeah, we're gonna go back to Adobe. So we're gonna go into the settings. We're gonna go to apps and we're gonna change the location where the apps are gonna be installed. So we're gonna make a folder under apps called Adobe and that's where all the Adobe apps will reside. So change the location for that as well. And enable auto updates, of course. And now we're gonna install all the Adobe apps, which is gonna take, I don't know how long. So we're gonna skip all the way through that because that takes forever. And next up, we're gonna transfer my keyboard shortcuts for Premiere. I have a preset saved up for that. And we're just gonna go to documents, Adobe. We have to start a Premiere Pro at least once. And then we go into Documents Adobe and we need to go into the WIN folder. And there was some weird file there that I just deleted. And uh, yeah, if it, OB Premiere started at once, we can go back to Documents Adobe and then on the Premiere Pro and the version, we can go into the user that we are using under Win and there we can paste the keyboard shortcuts in there. And now if we go to the keyboard shortcuts of Premiere, there it pops up and we can save it. Now I also use Adobe Sync, so I could have used that, but instead I just pasted the original file in there. And now we're gonna take a look at all these startup applications. So what do I not wanna start up during startup and what do I do wanna make startup at startup? So I'm just gonna disable a couple things here. Not everything, a lot of monitoring apps that still just need to be enabled. But uh, there's definitely a couple of applications that we can turn off at startup, like all the game launchers. I don't need those to be running at startup. Uh, Dropbox, I don't need that often. So we can also disable that and the, the, the game capture software as well. And now we're gonna change some settings for the lock screen. So we're gonna add an image to the lock screen. I'm gonna grab my retro image right there. And I'm gonna disable these extra functions. I don't really use them. And now we're gonna go into the process of adding all of the applications that I want in my start menu. So all my Adobe apps, all my creative apps, I want them to be in here. I also want all my utilities in here, game launchers and games and so on. So this is gonna be my main hub of where I'm gonna store these files. And no, I do not want them to group. Stay separate. I want them in a specific order. Most used apps at the top, least used apps at the bottom. And let's see, what else are we gonna add? We're gonna add Ryzen Master to the mix. Gonna add the game launchers. We're going to add ClickUp to the taskbar. We're going to add the game capture software as well. I'm gonna split these up nicely. Eventually, I'll find a way to organize it. Game launchers right there. GOG, Battlestate Games, Epic Games, Steam, Ubisoft. I'm gonna add all of those on there. I'm gonna add Wi-Fi 2X as the utility as well. Don't exactly know where I'm gonna put it yet. Is it a creative app or is it not? Don't know. IQ, we're gonna add that as well. Discord's the only social app, but we're gonna add that there even though it's already on the taskbar, so I'll probably end up removing Discord from this. NGXT Cam, OBS. So the game capture software is the on-screen control for LG. Uh, the Realtek audio console, so I can alter my audio settings or EQ if I want to. Add Streamlabs, I use OBS for local recording, Streamlabs for streaming. Uh, and then I just decide to put all the utilities, including the one for the Sound Blaster Katana, speaker and put them all in one folder right there. So all the utilities are right there and there. No, and I decide Wi-Fi 2X also belongs there. And now we've come to the coding section of the video. So uh, I installed Galaxy Watch Studio because I do like to make some watch faces from time to time. Now, if you're a web developer, you don't care about this, but uh, you need Java and then you can make your own watch faces so yeah i do make some watch faces from time to time 
uh, to customize my own watch because making your own is much better than relying on some other people's that you have to pay for you while you can just make your own i mean of course it will save you time but this is more interesting so yeah create my own watch faces so install java then with java we can install the galaxy watch studio and galaxy watch studio is also going to be installed under apps because it is an application and we're going to install auto hotkey to which where i get all my macros from like i code them myself and i use them also for editing uh in combination with lua macros to add a second keyboard but uh, i plan to see how i can do without again although i will set up the macros in lua macro at some point again and then i'm also installing an application called link shell extension extension and what this does is it allows me to make symbolic links without using the terminal so i can create easy symbolic links on the fly by right clicking in windows explorer and now we're going to install the meet application so vs code All right, we're going to change location to apps and then vs code there we go and we're also going to add it to the path and we're going to add the context options to open folder and open file with VS code. Then we're going to add PHP storm. I recently got a new license from them for my YouTube videos. So that's awesome. I didn't have to pay. So it's really cool. So we're definitely going to be seeing some more content for that. Now we're going to add it to the path and we're also going to add the contact option to open a folder in PHP Storm. And it is going to ask for a reboot, but go ahead and not allow that. And now we're going to install Git. So Git for Windows. Next. Also put that under apps slash Git. And through this, you could just press next through everything. Although there is a new option there, add git bash profile to Windows Terminal. You can check that on. Uh, you could also turn off the git for check for updates on Windows Update. You can do whatever you want there, really. But um, yeah, for the rest, you can just press next through and through. Although you might want to set this one to have the default editor to be VS Code. Um, but through the rest, you could just press next, 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 and next. Now, Git ended up getting stuck on the installation of the post install script. So I decided to restart the computer and restart it anyway. Now, this didn't result in any problems with Git. It's still running fine. But if this happens to you, you might want to reinstall Git altogether. So you might want to uninstall and reinstall it again. But it will probably be fine as it is for me right now. And sometimes it's good to restart your computer in between these installations. Because as you can see, there's some stuff happening on the first load that I don't want to happen. So we get a hotkey warning for ShareX. We get NZXT still popping up. I don't want that. And Discord opens up at startup. These are things that I don't want to happen. So luckily we can remedy them now, now that we know of them. But yeah, these uh, hotkeys for ShareX, we want to change those because they conflict with the original Windows keys by default. So we want to set them to something else. So I'm going to capture active window to none and capture entire screen to shift control print screen. Now we're going to set NZXT to start minimize and everything. We're going to dis disallow game hooking and whatnot because I don't like those things. And in Discord, am I changing any settings? Uh, window settings, start minimize. There we go. So Discord will start, but it will start minimize. Um, then I'm looking at some more Spotify settings and, uh, because it, I, th I thought it was open at the start as well, but it wasn't. So it's all good. Now, Git was working, as we saw. And now we can go back to installing more stuff. So, so now we're going to install MariaDB. This is my preferred application for databases. You can use whatever, of course, but MariaDB is my preference at the moment of writing this. So MariaDB it is. Uh, do I want to modify the root password? No, because it's local. Don't care. Local development. I really don't care what the password is or whatever, because it's not meant to be secure anyway. So there we go. MariaDB installed. And we're going to install Node.js, so we get NPM, and we can install packages and whatnot. So we're going to add that to under Apps, Node.js. Uh, 
And then we have to install PHP. So we're gonna go to php.net. I'm gonna not enable the extension for Adobe Acrobat and downloads Windows PHP 8.0.10. I'm gonna start with PHP 8 this time. Uh, you might want to go back to 7.4 if you really need to. And I'm going to, and under the app section, or actually under the development uh, drive, I'm going to create a PHP folder. So a folder called PHP. And I'm going to grab that zip file that I downloaded, and I'm going to unpack it in that folder. So there we go. We're going to unpack that. You might want to rename this folder to the version of the PHP that it is, but we're going to do that later. Uh, and you want to grab any of these php.ini slash develop or dash development or dash production and you want to rename them to php.ini and then under edit we we're going to look for semicolon ext or extension and we're going to uncomment extension dear equals ext we're going to uncomment that and then we're going to also uncomment a bunch of these lines so we're going to uncomment perl file info gd intl mb string we're going to also uncomment the PDO for MySQL and MySQL Lite if you're using MySQL Lite. There we go. And that's all she wrote for php.ini. Now at this point you want to go into the environment variables by searching for it in the Windows Start and you want to add the PHP folder to the system path. Like so. Hit OK. And we're done. And now we're going to install Composer. So Composer from the website, get the setup for Windows. And we're going to get that installed as well. Links to everything in the description. Again, as I said. And now you can see, I'm gonna set up a couple things. We've gotta select the correct PHP function, but I'm deciding to cancel out now because I've got to add a folder around the PHP folder. So going back to development PHP and we're going to take all these files and we're going to put it in the version uh, folder name. So 8.0.10, I'm going to click everything or control A, control click the 8.0.10 folder, drag everything in there, move it, uh, change the environment variable again, uh, this time in path and then switch over the DPHP to DPHP and then 8.0.10 and now we're going to install Composer. And we're just checking if PHP works by going into the command prompt and PHP-V for version, and it works. So, and now Composer. So Composer, we're going to install for all users. Um, it selects the PHP version automatically. Don't need a proxy. Install. And there you go. It's done. And now we're going to install Laravel. So going to the Laravel website, documentation, installation and there is a command for composer that you have to type in which is composer global require laravel slash installer i'm going to pop that in the command prompt right here and that's going to globally install laravel so we can use it from our command prompt and install new projects and now we're going to install yarn so this is the command npm install dash dash global yarn you can also check out the website, of course. Again, all the links in the description. It is basically an extension of NPM that is just a little bit faster. Now, during the installation of everything, some other files have started to crop up. So this csb.log, it just has some Chinese characters in it. I don't know what it is or what it's for, but I don't need it, so delete it. And then we're going to install Netflix because every coder needs something to do in his spare time when he's not coding. So Netflix and also install Amazon Prime because I also use that. And now we're installing a power plan. Now this power plan is completely optional. Someone made this for the Ryzen processors. And as the command prompt already reads, if you have a Zen 2 processor, you can use the Ryzen power plan. Otherwise you can use the universal power plan. So you can see Ryzen power plan if you have a Zen 2 processor or a universal for any other Ryzen processor. But it's supposed to make the computer a little bit more performant. Cram a little bit more performance out of it. It's completely optional. It might not even impact your performance at all, but it's it's an option. I didn't even use it on my previous install, but I wanted to give it a try this time. Now we're just further organizing the start menu with creative utility games and tools or social and splitting it up even further. And this is the point where I discovered that, well, home cloud is no longer supported for Gigabyte. So I decided to remove that. And now we're going to Take a look at some of the other apps. So easy tune and fast boot. So fast boot, I'm gonna set that to ultra fast. 
and I can enter the BIOS from the fastboot if I still want to and take a look at Easy Tune. I look at the performance that you could put in there and you can overclock it immediately to have 4.2 gigahertz on all the cores. But I see in the bottom left here already that I'm already running way over that. So I'm guessing the auto overclocking feature is doing its job. And now we're organizing the system tray, putting all the icons that I want on there. Anything that I want immediate control over. So my soundbar, I want immediate control over. App Center, I want access to. OneDrive, Creative Cloud, ShareX, Discord, IQ, NZXT Cam, and Spotify. I want all of them easily available right there. And Samsung Magician, I'm going to turn off that it's not going to run at startup of Windows because I don't want to run that at the startup. So it doesn't have to be in the system tray. Put the safe disconnect for the USBs on there as well. And Bluetooth. And that's about it. So that's my configuration for the system tray. Most of it is popped out. Now, now we're going to open up Ryzen Master and we're going to go and enable game mode. So we're going to go into the advanced view and then we're going to go into game mode and click apply. And that's going to reboot us into game mode, which is going to enable legacy compatibility mode and disable some of the cores of our processor so that it performs better in single core applications, at least theoretically. And Yes, there are some games, I've tested it out with Tarkov, it definitely does make a huge difference when gaming. So if you are gaming, switch to game mode if you've got a Ryzen processor. If you're doing creative tasks, switch to creative mode, it really does help, even if it's just a little bit. And now we're coming to the backup portion of this video, so go to backup and restore Windows 7 on the backup settings, and we're gonna create a system image. Now on that, we're gonna select the drive that we wanna store the image on, which is gonna be the backup drive, and then we're gonna press next. And then select every drive in my case. In my case, I should have selected every drive because the development and everything, fast storage, creative cloud, all that stuff is also set up. So I should have pressed every single drive here. I'm not sure if I actually did that or not, but yeah, I should have pressed every single drive and then create the system image. So start backup, start that, and it's gonna take a while. Afterwards, he's gonna ask you for a system repair disc. Now, if you can do this, so if you do have a burner at home, please do do this because it allows you to pop in the image even when Windows is no longer functional. But in my case, I don't have a DVD burner, so I can't make a system repair disc. There are other ways of doing backups and whatnot. There's other software out there that can do the sim a similar thing or can store it on a completely different system, like a NAS. Uh, do definitely do do your research for doing this, but if you do want just a basic image that you can revert to at any time Then this is the way to do so Now there are some things that I forgot to mention in the initial making of this video So the afterthoughts are coming now and all the other extra configurations that I forgot to mention Now we're gonna configure some more stuff in Corsair RQ So I switched back to Corsair RQ 3 because 4 does not work for my fans because I got the SP RGB pros the pros are not supported yet, so I create my custom profile here. You can see the points that I've created at what fan speed they're going. So I'm going from 300 to 600 to 1200 and then 2400 at the last moment. But I'm just creating a cool, quiet profile because turns out that balance is not that quiet. So because my CPU actually runs idle at sort of 50 degrees-ish, which, I mean, it's not great, but that's just the way it is. That's just the way the 3900X runs. It's just a really hot processor. But uh, yeah, this is my configuration for my fan curve and how I've set it to all the fans. So there you go. And now we're going to go into 7-zip where I forgot to put in some more settings. Uh, there is a options panel where you can decide what you want to show up in the context menu. So when you right click on a folder uh, or a zip folder, you can decide from different options. Now, some of those options you can disable because well, the list is quite long. So I only enable a couple of them and that's open archive. Uh, I'm going to do extract here, extract the folder and add to archive. Those are really the only options that I use. Now let's also take a look at share X. If you right click on it, you can see multiple options here. You can say, what do you do? What, what to do after the capture, after the upload. Um, and you could also configure what it should do when you click or double click or middle click on the share X icon. So you can set it to different things like screen recording, screen capture, or a color picker even. There are more settings or more options that share X offers, but these are the main ones. And 
as you can see there's quite a lot of options you can also save to the file or you can save file as immediately you can give a prompt you can recognize text even or you can even scan qr codes there's tons of stuff that this application can do for you there's also a option to go straight to the screenshots folder you can also configure your own screenshot folder um, and yeah you can also configure whether or not to make a pop-up uh, come when you like finish your screen recording or whatever you can have a pop-up that you can click on to go straight to the folder or whatever or you can not have it happen at all uh, there's also a sound cue that happens when you finish but you can also turn that off as well there, it, everything is configurable and that is basically everything that I do to set up my windows. As you can see, the desktop is completely clean. There's nothing on there. And anytime I want to just run an application, it's usually found in the Windows Start menu, or I just start searching by just pressing the Windows key to open up the Windows Start and then just start typing. You can meet, you don't you don't need that search icon there to start searching. Uh, it was always built in the windows start already so you just open up start and you could already start typing so that's how i find other applications if they're not in the windows start uh, tiles section uh, another thing i did forget to mention is i also turn off the live tiles so netflix has live tiles amazon prime has live tiles right click on those tiles you could turn off live tiles because i don't like that um but this is my general gist of just Installing everything from start to finish, configuring everything that needs to be configured. Um, I could go in further and deeper into the entire keyboard shortcuts and and well, all my keybinds and how I speed up things even further, all my hotkeys that I use or whatever, but that, that's gonna make the video way too long and it's already way too long, I apologize, but I at least hope it was somewhat useful and that you have learned something. It's really all I wanted to do. I just wanted to show you how I approach this stuff uh, from someone who has installed Windows over and over and over again. Maybe you could also recommend this to people that, you know, I've never installed Windows before. You could like just show it on the first beginner section of, you know, you make the USB, you go through that and whatever. So I don't know, maybe it's shareable video. I don't, I don't know if it's a shareable video, but that's up to you guys so hopefully you found something useful let me know in the comments down below if you got any further questions ask them down there too and i'll see you in the next video see you